Zechariah, like Haggai, is a book written to the Jews that have left Babylon, gone back to Judah. Now, nothing said about Haggai and Zechariah being companions. But God sent these two men to exhort, to help, encourage the Jewish people in the land. Zechariah is an interesting book of not which a lot of people know all the answers. And it's an interesting note that I have here. I don't care what the scholars say, I just want you to know. Many scholars, many scholars, impressed with the differences between chapter 1 to 8 and 9 through 14, conclude that Zechariah did not write the last six chapters. I don't care what they say. I don't think scholars know what they know, what they do, they think they know. They think there's a deuteral Isaiah. They think that Daniel's prophecies, well, that Daniel wrote them when Greece was in power. You're going to stand before a holy and righteous God, and you're going to be called a liar. So, Zechariah 1 going to be one of them books that we're going to take slow. We're not in a rush. In the eighth month, Haggai began the sixth month in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, now in, where is it? In Nehemiah 12, 16, it mentions that uh, Zechariah is, is a priest, apparently. Jeremiah was of the priest. The Lord has been sore to displeased with your father. And that's what we're going to look at tonight. The Jewish forefather. And if you want anything to do with that, go back to Jeremiah and Isaiah, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Samuel. Go back and read the, go back to the judges that we studied. Therefore say unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, that's the God Jehovah of everything. Turn ye unto me. Repent. Get right. Come back to me, you backsliders. Saith the Lord of hosts. I will turn unto you. So God in, the, in Judah turning away from God, God has turned away from them. See, there are people today in Christians saying, well, I'm going to walk the forbidden path. I'm going to go my own way. I'm going to do what I want to do. And there will be the footprints of Jesus. No. And you learn that fact in several places in Pilgrim's Progress by Bunyan. One place is when Pilgrim falls asleep in the arbor. And he gets up and he goes about his merry way. Well, the word, God, was back in the auburn underneath the bush or wherever. And then when, I forget which companion he had, when, when Pilgrim decides to go off on the beaten track and they end up at Doubting Castle, well, God stayed back on the trail where they went wrong. God's not going to walk with you when you are in rebellion. All right, America may have been a Christian or at least a nation under God. It ain't no more. 
And what blessings have happened is because of those who are living right, trying to do right, who hold the King James Bible and are in prayer. Outside the fact of the rapture, let's say all those Christians leave America, got sick of America, we leave for the rapture. You're going to realize in America how well you've been blessed by the just, where God says it's rain upon the just and the unjust. I'm getting pretty darn well sick of these public schools and these private schools teaching all the ch children all the garbage they're teaching them. The biggest thing right now is these elementary schools are introducing the children to drag queens. And you Christians ain't rising up. You're more worried about Donald Trump and our children being perverted. You have not removed your children out of the public school system. They're still going to the public school system tomorrow. And you want to say God bless America? God ain't in that. God ain't with your child in that public school system. Don't you dare go say, oh God, what happened? You didn't pull your children out, Lot. You got to you got accustomed to the world, Judah. I sent Jeremiah. I sent the prophet. I sent my people. We're going to read that, and you didn't listen. You see, the devil's got you distracted in something else. The government. Forget about the government. There's no hope for the government. If God wants your guns confiscated, you're not going to stop him from getting your guns. Even if he's got to take you home early. I like one of the movies I watched one time, you know, the Russians came, attacked America. And in this town, there's this pickup truck. This guy dead on the ground. He's got a bumper sticker. You can have my my gun when the day I'm like dead. And the soldier comes up, steps on his hand, and grabs his gun. Not good doing you. When God is displeased with you, he's going to send somebody to you. And they're going to try to teach you the truth, even in the church or churches. God's going to send somebody, he's going to say, this is the truth, this is the truth. Oh, no, 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 it's not the truth. That's garbage. Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts. I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. God ain't going to take part in your, your sin. That's what Christians think. Christians think that they can put a label and say, this is Jesus, this is Christian. It's got to be approved. No, it don't. Your music, your Bibles, your service, your... That's what Judah's been doing. The, the church and the world need to study Jeremiah verse by verse. With the saving belief in Jesus Christ as their Savior of the King James Bible. To realize we are a nation we are a world that's in trouble. Judah blamed it all because we weren't ser they weren't serving the Queen of Heaven. America is blaming it all on global warming. Your father, where are they, Dad? How did primary most of the Jewish fathers died. Did they live to a ripe old age, lay down in their bed, closed their eyes, and woke up in Abraham's bosom? Did you study Judah? I mean, did you study Judges? God sent the enemy in? Did you read Babylon coming in? Assyria coming in with the sword and killing. You read Lamentations 
where they're dying in the street for no food. There's been drought, there's been starvation, there's been rape, there's been sword. I would assume even suicide. There's been torture. Why? Because you forsook the Lord. And as far as the Jewish people, I just read the other day in Leviticus. That one chapter, it's close to the end, I think 23. And if you don't, I'll get you seven times, and I'm not quoting for a bit, I'll get you seven times more for your sin. And it goes on, and if you don't, I'll get you seven more times for your sin. And if you don't, I'll get you seven more times for your sin. And if you don't, I'll get you seven. Man, I'm like, whoa, Lord. And the last three or four verses of that chapter, if you will get right, if you will do right. And I, I, when I closed the Bible and I, I spoke to the Lord about the word and I came to the conclusion, God, you're very serious about sin. You told Israel what is right, what is wrong, what is clean, what is unclean, what is holy, what is unholy. And you held them to that. Those Jews have been through worldwide torture. What do you think is going to happen to the Christians in the lives of seeing church age of America? Oh. We have to pay four dollars for gasoline for a gallon. Ooh. Where you give a Chinese people in an underground church a box of Bibles and they're hugging and loving and kissing it. I know a preacher that went over I don't know it was Japan, Korea, or one of the nations over there. And he was speaking to military personnel. He got permission. And I know he said they were communists, I believe. And they were sitting there right in the front row so he could watch them. And he, I, I don't know what I'm going to say, open your Bibles to John. And they very daintily took their Bible out of a plastic bag. They folded a plastic bag and put it next to them. They very carefully opened their Bible and very carefully, page by page, opened. they knew where they were going. They opened very carefully, page to page, and they got to the place, folded the page out, and they treated that Bible with respect. Now listen, the Bible ain't the Word of God. I mark my Bible. I can't mark God. I had a preacher tell me, you think the King James Bible comes out of the very Word of Jesus. Uh, yes and no, I don't. Judah was giving the word, the law. God sent prophets. And they said, no. We won't do it. We're not going to do right. We're going to go to our gods. We're going to go to our goddesses. We're going to do what we want to do. That's what the church says today. Uh, you say it's pagan, but we're going to do what we... Okay. I've got to the point now, it's, you know what? I'm just going to tell you. And if you don't want any... I'm not going to say anything more, no more. Unless God... <laughs> Wants me. I think I'm a messenger of God to the church saying, Christians, that you got to do right. That's what's happening here. Your father set a poor example of living because my majority of them, through the history of the Jews, died violently. 
They died against the law. They died in the hands of the enemies. And they're not, in, many of them are not in Abraham's bosom. Here I said many. Isn't that the case today? Many do not die and go to heaven today. They are in hell. And the prophets, do they live forever? Well, as far as what the Jews see like, no. And when you read a lot of things and then you read the Pauline epistles, it's like, well, wait a minute. We do live forever. We are going to go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. It's That's not how the Jewish people saw it. The prophets of Jesus, the prophets of God, they're living today. Jeremiah, Isaiah, all of them. But as far as the revelation to the Jews and to the Old Testament, you just went to the grave. Abraham's bosom was never mentioned until Jesus. Can you imagine that moment when Jesus said, and Lazarus died and carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Can you imagine all the people around? What? What did he say? They go to where? But my words and my statutes, law, which I commanded my servants to profit, Mo it goes all the way back to Moses. And outside the Jewish people, it can go all the way back to Noah, who preached, and can only go back to, to Enoch, the Bible says, who prophesied. Enoch prophesied of the second coming of Jesus before Jesus even came. Even he was told about Jesus Christ. The very first prophecy in the Bible is Genesis 3, I don't know, 16, 15 or 16. The crushing of the head. The bruising of the feet. And what God is saying to the Jews are back in the promised land after all this. Israel's not back yet and they will not go back yet. I warned you. I sent my prophet. And you can only imagine that Ezekiel comes in their mind. Jeremiah comes in their mind. Isaiah comes in their mind. But you're going to need to get to the mid Ezra. And the end of Nehemiah, they're, they're already blowing it. Did they not take hold of your father? The prophets were faithful, the fathers weren't. And what God is telling them right now, they got Haggai and they got Zechariah. You better listen to them too. Because your father, your history of your nation, your people, your stiff neck, you have not listened to the prophets. That's what God is saying. And Zechariah is going to throw some wild things out there. That even the scholars think, oh, he couldn't have wrote that. <laughs> And there are even scholars and rabbis of the Jews don't even believe what their Old Testament says in place. And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, 
according to our way. And according to our doing, so he dwelt with us. Well, we got back to work. We're getting... Because we are in the sixth, I mean the eighth month. And if you go back to Haggai chapter 2, uh, no, Haggai chapter 1, verse 14, the Lord stirred up the Spirit, and the people came to work. Verse 15, the four and twentieth day of the sixth month. So by the time Zechariah shows up the eighth month, they've been two works month two work. They've been two months working. Aren't we doing good? Aren't we <laughs> but didn't Haggai just finish the last chapter? Your heart's not in it. You know, I'm gonna say this. When you in the church age, you get up as a pastor, as a teacher. You know, Malachi, you're going to give 10%. You're going to give 10%. You're going to give 10%. We're, we're, we're going to have pledge. We're going to have, you know, uh, what was it? You know, uh, uh, challenge the Lord. Uh, no, faith giving and all that. I forget what they Prove the tithes. And some of your preaching... It's discouraging the Christian. Because they know in their heart there's something the Holy Spirit testifies. You're in the wrong book. And if someone would give the, the testimony, like Brother Paul, I, I, I tithe, I give above the tithe, I give because I want to give. I'm going to have a hard time paying my rent or my electrical bill coming next month. Only by the grace and mercy of God, I don't know how he did it. It, it, it God. There are Christians who love the Lord and do right. There, there are Christians here in Ezra and Nehemiah. They love the Lord. They're doing... They, you know, when you read Nehemiah about building that wall, it looks like, oh yeah, one chapter, it's done. It didn't take one chapter to build all that. That's hard work. Nehemiah was in there building too. I come from Connecticut, and I I know pastors who were gone into an elderly woman's house and pull up their toilet and fix their toilet. I haven't seen no pastors down here in Florida do that. I know of pastors in, in Connecticut they would go and drive their people to a store or the doctors. The pastor. I know people in the church, they, they went and visited you in the hospital because yeah, they're paid staff of the church to do that. I had a pastor one time, I was in the hospital and he brought somebody in. He said, well, you know, I knew who the guy was on. I'm going to start having him come to this area with hospitals and all that because it's just too far for me. I'm like, I travel the same distance. I live right behind the hospital. I travel the same distance Sunday morning, Sunday coming home, Sunday night coming home, midweek service and coming home. It's a bother for you. But you can go to Louisiana, you can go to Alabama and boast about how many people. You have. And this is what's going on here. This is the work. This is people. 
Look how many rock stars did. Look what we did. And what is God saying? Haggai and starting up. You're not doing so good. Oh, but we're doing such a great job. We're great. We have need of nothing. We. Uh, does that sound familiar in your ears? We're doing a great work. We're building a great work. God says, wait a minute. Zechariah, tell him, I'm not in it. Turn ye now, verse 4, from your evil ways, from your evils of your doing. That's the history. Why would God tell these people that right now? Because they're doing it right now. God knows what they will do tomorrow on Zechariah's time. And they will go so forth that the Messiah will show up and they will put Messiah on the cross and crucify him. Messiah will send out over 12 special men. 13 men. 14 men and one with his wife. 15 men. And women. He will send them out on missionary trips and missionary journey and going house to house. They will give their house for Lord's service. And the Jews will persecute him and the Jews will kill him. And all except for the Apostle John, all the Apostles died a violent death. You say, well, so Rome. Yeah, but the Jews had part in it. Because they had not listened to Zechariah. God wants them and us to do right. We've got to acknowledge the evil we've done. The evil ways we walk. We've got not only to confess them, we got to forsake them and go the right way. And Zechariah is showed up by God. Come on, guys, we can do it. Let's go. We can do it. That's what the world says. Just do it. But Zechariah's we can do it through the Lord. We can do right through Jehovah. And Jehovah, the Lord God, can be and will be pleased. Or don't do it at all. There's going to be many people in the churches, saved or lost, that their life, whether they're not living today, they're living today or they've already died, or in the future, there are people who think they are great with God, God is pleased, God is happy, I'm doing well. In judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, they're going to find out, no, you didn't. That's particularly mentioned to the Laodicean in church age. You're not so great. You're miserable, wretched, naked. And I'm standing at the door knocking. Jesus. How is God knocking to the Judah? Haggai? Yes, Lord? Go speak to him. Okay. 
Thus saith the Lord. Zechariah, yes, Lord? Go, go talk to my people. Okay, Lord, thus saith the Lord. That's Jehovah knocking on their door. Say, come on. Come with me. Do right. That's why God sent these prophets. That's why God sent Jeremiah. I want you to do right because you're not doing right. And the fathers didn't listen. That's a shame. 